Welcome to the final four. Yeah, four teams. Da, 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 da. <laughs> yes. da, 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 da. All right. Okay, I'm I'm Jim Nance. Welcome to the Oh, he doesn't do the final four anymore, does he? Uh Ian Eagle. Welcome to the uh to the semifinals for most of you. Good stuff. Adam Azer, Dave Richard, Jamie Eisberg. Pretty interesting waiver wire week. Oh, happy holidays, everyone. Jalen Hurts has a shoulder injury, and many of you need a quarterback. Unbelievable. So disappointing. Probably not gonna play. We're not expecting him to play, fair to say, this week against Dallas. Correct. Fair to say. Yeah. Oh, what a bummer. And honestly, if they win, he may not play we'll him again. Playoffs. Right. Yeah. So the NFL playoffs. Um, so because they if they win, they lock up the one seed. But we'll help you out. Is it Gardner Minshew? Is it Brock Purdy? Maybe Daniel Jones is available in your league. Uh Jamie didn't think uh who did I recommend? Russell Wilson. Jamie wants to feel with Russell Wilson. Russell Wilson and Ryan Tannehill. Yeah, two stellar options there by you. <laughs> well, you know, just just search it here because Look, man, I, I can tell you in, in the one league where I lost Kyler, I picked up Mike White and then I had and then I, I, you know, when he got hurt, I just was scraping for Tannehill. And I think the waiver wire is really thin at court. Yeah, he's is he the saving grace? That's right. <laughs> the knight in shining armor. All right. Well, uh, how are you guys? Uh, how are you guys doing? How many leagues you got left here with uh, two weeks to go? Uh, eight for me. Ooh, that's good. I survived in all but one of my leagues. And for wow. whatever reason, I am hung up on the one that I lost by three and a half points. Uh, it's, you know, a testimony to the human condition, how we seem to always be focused on the negatives instead of the positives. So yeah. I will try to overcome that and stay positive with my remaining 10 teams. All right. Good for you guys. I started with nine teams. I have three left. Uh, I will be eliminated from. So here's the follow-up. Probably all of them. <laughs> I'm so you're not going to. We'll help you. How many of your remaining teams have Jalen Hurts on them? I so, oh oh uh, Scott Fishbowl. Yeah, one. So you're done in the Fishbowl. Yeah, yeah, you're right. That one's out. Yeah, uh, Jamie, what'd you say? I have two with Hurts. Me too. Me too. It's going to be tough, including one league that I've. I'm like the Patriots of this fantasy league. I've dominated it for years, and I kind of want to keep dominating. <laughs> and now I'm in big. All right. Well, we'll see if Jalen Hurt, if uh, Gardner Minshew is the answer against the Dallas Cowboys. So, Jamie, it is a pretty interesting week. Jonathan Taylor is going to be out, obviously, and some good wide receivers available as usual. Uh, who's who are the top priorities on the waiver wire? I think just because of the the quarterback situation, I'll, I'll put Gardner Minshew first, uh, Brock Purdy second, and then if you just want three, I'll say Zach Moss third. But <clears throat> um, the, the like you said, there are some interesting receivers. So, Traylon Burks, you know, hopefully he'll play. Uh, John Dotson's obviously been playing well, but he has a tough matchup. Uh, and then Miko Hardman, hopefully he's able to return and can pick up where he left off prior to the abdomen injury. But I think just given the nature of what we're talking about here, uh, Minshew is going to be the most added player and should be because he's got, uh, I think, the chance to help fantasy managers for maybe the next two weeks. Dave, how do you see it? Top priorities? I think you've got to make quarterback a top priority if you've got a quarterback problem. If you lost Kyler Murray a week ago, or if you lost Jalen Hurts this week, you're in line to go and get Gardner Minshew or Brock Purdy. I like Minshew better because I think he's got more upside, but Purdy is a pretty good second prize. And there's some gamesmanship that we can suggest here along the way. If you happen to be playing against somebody that's got Jalen Hurts in week 16 and you have waiver priority, you may choose to go ahead and pick up Minshew so that your opponent cannot. Uh, I agree with Zach Moss and I agree with Jahan Dotson. So let's call it Minshew Dotson Moss as the top three priorities for this week. Uh, what about the fact that Dotson's playing the 49ers? You're gonna really that's the only drawback. You know, I that's why I would say if if you tell me right now Burks is playing and Dotson's playing, I'll take Burks over Dotson. And so um he's he's certainly played well the last two weeks. You know, they're starting to, you know, get him more involved, which is exciting. And the nice thing is, is that, you know, we really haven't seen this very much from the commander since Heineke has taken over, you know, where they're chasing points to maybe a dramatic fashion. And so that could hopefully help the situation. So I don't think you just have to like completely sprint away from Dotson if you wanted to pick him up. But, um, you know, if, if you do pick him up and then he does have another, you know, productive game, then we get to week, you know, 17 and you might have a number three receiver in your championship round. So, um, again, not somebody I want to start this week, but somebody I wouldn't have a problem, you know, as, as the, 
the second or third priority, you know, off waivers. And the nice thing about it, as you alluded to Adam, we're down to the final four. So mm-hmm. you might be able to pick up two or three guys this week and, and discard some players on your roster that you're never going to use, which we've been saying, you know, I think for the last several weeks. So is there a big difference between Minshew and Purdy? And I ask this because maybe, do you think it makes sense if you're facing a team that doesn't need a quarterback and maybe that team does the gamesmanship thing and, and claims quarterbacks, but should you make Zach Moss your first priority and then just say, all right, I'll probably, you have to obviously look at the other, not just the team you're playing, but the other two teams that will be playing in the other semifinal. Should you, should you make Zach Moss your priority and then think, okay, I can get either Minshew or Purdy with my second claim? Yeah, you're saying if you need a quarterback? Let's say you need both. Let's say you want a quarterback okay. and a running back. Right, so you have Jalen Hurts and Jonathan Taylor, and now you're basically crying in your cereal this morning. I would say that you prioritize the running back first. And it's not just because of Minshew and Purdy, and you've got a pretty good chance to get one of those two with your second waiver claim. But you mentioned Russell Wilson. You mentioned Ryan Tannehill. Did you mention Zach Wilson, who you no. might start? You might That's start right. him and just don't watch the game. Just don't watch it. <laughs> Let it go. Or maybe just tune in in the fourth quarter to see how bad it is. But, I mean, he did find over 20 fantasy points last week. So wouldn't be a priority. But there are enough quarterbacks with four teams remaining that you could go ahead and make that a lesser priority if you need both. But obviously, when it comes to setting your waiver priority for this week, you've got to take care of your own team first before you start trying to steal guys from other teams. The the thing about it is, depending on the size of your league, um, there really isn't, aside from, I think, quarterback, if you're the Hurts or, as Dave alluded to, the, the Kyler Murray manager, there's not really a guy that's going to say that you're going to pick up of the ones we're going to talk about. That's a must-start guy. You know, so if you've been streaming tight ends, you know, you might might be able to find or, or need to start, you, you know, uh, Oconquo again or you know, Noah Fant potentially, you know, with the boost that he can be seeing if, if you know, Lockett doesn't play as expected. Um, Zach Moss, I don't want to start if I don't have to. Um, so he's a, he's a flex at best. I want to ask you about that because obviously he's got the Chargers and he had a, pr- a really nice role. They are averaging, I think, 27 running back. Is that right? I'll look it up. I think he said it yesterday, 27 touches carries again. Right? Yeah. I, I just don't think carries. he's that good. I yeah. don't think he's that good. I don't think they're getting 37 carries out of their backfield and 24 of them are going to Zach Moss in this game. You know, 22. so I, I think we're just looking at a guy that if he does not score, he has no role in the passing game. And so you're getting a lot of empty production here because I just think that this is a team that's completely, completely lost and, and, and fractured right now. Their best player is gone. You know, they just blew a 33 point lead, you know, on national TV. Um, they're going on national TV again. You know, they're, they're, they're a punchline. And so it's, uh, you know, if you want to trust Zach Moss, if you have to, again, it's a different story. But if, you, if, you, if you're planning to, oh, my God, I can't wait to pick up Zach Moss and start him in the semifinals, you're probably making a mistake. Okay. But if you had Deontay Foreman or something, you know. You yeah, could- no, again, there, there are different circumstances. I totally get it. You know, so, um, you know, you can make an argument for Zach Moss over Brian Robinson this week. Yeah, you know, I was just going to ask and, you. And those type of things. So there, there's. That- there's lots of different ways it could go, but you know, again, we're talking about what is most likely, barring some upset in your league, the four best teams that are left. And so, if the four best teams that are left are healthy, you're probably not starting Zach Moss. So, I, I think to your point, you know, what you said in terms of playing defense, um, I know for me, in in one of the leagues where I have Jalen Hurts, um, I I was the one seed, and so if I'm playing against me, I do have Deshaun Watson, but I don't want to start him. Somebody, I think I don't remember when because I wasn't paying attention because I didn't need it, but somebody dropped Trevor Lawrence. And so I'm going to make a play for Trevor Lawrence. But if I can't get Trevor Lawrence, I'm getting Gardner Minshew. Now, if I'm looking at it in the league, and I hope nobody's listening, that I am trying to make it a priority, barring something that I need on my own team, to not get the one seed to get Trevor Lawrence. So the the two, three, and four should make a play for Trevor Lawrence and then try and circle back and get something else. And then also my opponent, who I think is the, was the four seed, um, should – if they don't get Lawrence should also try and make a play for Minshew thinking that maybe I don't get Minshew, you know? So like I'm trying to play defense more so than I am trying to pick up Zach Moss in that situation. Okay. So some of the big names we mentioned are Minshew and Purdy at quarterback. Neither of them have good matchups on paper, but um, we're, I, there's another thing we have to talk about. It's, it's weather. Both of them should be unaffected by weather. Thankfully, uh, Zach Moss at running back, Jahan Dotson, Traylon Burks, at wide receiver, Juwan Johnson is going to be the, the best widely available tight end this week. At least according to Jamie, Dave is he's with Juwan Johnson of the widely available tight ends be number one for you. 
He's number one for me, 75% available, and the dude just keeps finding a way to score touchdowns for New Orleans. He only ran 13 routes last week, so yeah, not healthy probably, not. but you know we see that a lot. First game back, limited. Second game back, more like the normal snap share, so you could have a lot more routes run next week. Um, but we'll talk about the weather because it could be a major factor. I'm sure you all know because your holiday plans, it's going to be an ugly, cold, breezy, snowy weekend, a white Christmas, most likely across most of the country. And now the games are on Christmas Eve for the most part, but we'll get to that in a second. If you are traveling, um, they're all playing Saturday night. What do you mean? It's all coming in Saturday night. Well, you said Christmas Eve. That's Saturday night. No, it's not. It's the, the whole day is Christmas of, Eve. Christmas of, of the 24th. What is you got that wrong last time. You're getting it wrong again. What are you talking about? Christmas Eve is the day before, man. It's not just it's the, the night, night before. before. No. That would be Eve. When you wake up Eve on is... December 24th, it's Christmas Eve. Are you serious here, Jamie? This is weird. I mean, you got killed for this the last time you said it. That... What? No, I didn't. Yes, you did. But everyone's wrong then. Christmas Eve <laughs> okay. is the entire 24th. What? Um, I mean, anyway. if, if everyone's wrong, then everyone's wrong. But everybody told you you were wrong. So. <laughs> How no, that I'm wrong too. I thought the whole day was Christmas Eve. It is. It 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 is. I I, I don't know. Let's see um, what Google tells us. Okay, actually, very curious here. Anyway, FFP and five is what I was going to tell you about. Um, you know, they it records on the eve of the day that it publishes. But FFT and five is your five to seven minute quick fantasy football update hosted by Chris Towers. We're also giving away some Paramount Plus months. So, well, a free month of Paramount Plus. Uh, we will do that in a little bit. And Schaefer, please remind me because I'm going to forget. Let's talk about the weather. So our research department sends us, us an email. <laughs> uh, it's basically just like all of your fantasy teams are screwed. So <laughs> New Orleans and Cleveland could have gusts up to 63 mi miles per hour. <laughs> Buffalo at Chicago could have gusts up to 37. Houston at Tennessee gusts up to 33, 14 mile per hour winds could feel like six degrees. Cincinnati at New England, 17 mile per hour winds gusts up to 37 could feel like 10 degrees. And Kansas City could feel like four degrees gusts up to 30 miles per hour. Baltimore, pretty much the same hosting Atlanta, Carolina, pretty similar, not quite as windy. Um, Las Vegas at Pittsburgh on Sunday, on Saturday night, uh, could feel like negative 14 degrees. Holy cow. Um, this is eight games. Yeah, the really windy ones. As of now, look at that. He sent this on Monday, right? We know how much right. things Four change. Forecast change, for sure. But, but Cleveland and Chicago. Those are the really two. Do you put New England in there, too? I think you do. Tennessee and New England are a little bit less. But, yeah, Cle New Orleans at Cleveland, Buffalo at Chicago, Houston at Tennessee, Cincinnati at New England. Don't sit Josh Allen, but, <laughs> but I don't know. I mean, Dave, what do you make of this? This could be the, the worst weather we've seen in a long time for fantasy football. I feel across so many games. So here's the refresher. Normally we don't take the temperature into consideration when evaluating players. Although there are exceptions to that rule when there's a track record of a quarterback, for example, that has never played well in cold weather, maybe even going back to college. There's definitely something to that. What matters to me the most is wind. And the fact that you, you see 36 mile per hour winds with gusts up to 63 in Cleveland. And I immediately, I don't care if Amari Cooper's playing at home in his pajamas. I don't care if they're playing in his backyard. <laughs> I am not starting him if the winds are 36 mile an hour because that football is it's going to go off the field as soon as it leaves to Sean Watson's hand. And I'm definitely getting away from the kickers in that game. Forget about it. That's a Nick Chubb game. That's That might be a Kareem Hunt game, and it could be an Alvin Kamara game too because those teams will just run the ball and not take their chances with the win. I'll remind everybody of the game last year between the Patriots and the Bills where like, the goalposts were shifting before the game, and Mac Jones attempted only three passes. That's the type of game that we could see between the Saints and the Browns. The other thing to look for with weather is visibility. And what that what I mean by that is if it's if it's snowing – but if it's a light snow, it's almost delightful. The players aren't going to be affected by that. But if it's heavy snow and you can't see that far in front, how can you hit your receivers downfield? That'll affect the passing games as well. So those Just are the two things that you really want to keep in week. mind. 
this week with Buffalo, where it was, oh my God, it's a disaster, it's a disaster, disaster, and then the snow didn't come until the end of the game. So yeah. a lot could change, obviously, between now and the weekend. So, so what's the rule? What's the rule that we normally adhere to? I have no idea. Wait until an hour before kickoff to make any serious decisions. Dave, you know I play by my own rules. <laughs> you know so who. you're going to make your decisions right now and not worry well, about look, the weather. An if hour I'm desperate kickoff. for a quarterback, I'm I'm not even considering Andy Dalton or Deshaun Watson. Um, I. I'm probably not going to consider Ryan Tannehill because first of all, Derrick Henry rushes, rushes for 200 yards four straight times or five straight times against the Texans, whatever it is. Yes, so yes, yes. Congra- early congrats to everybody who has Derrick right. Henry on their face. It makes me, it makes me wonder about Traylon Burks. Um, I think we're lucky that there are only four teams left in most leagues. So, you know, you can afford to, to grab Burks or something like that. And if the weather's really bad, you can drop them for someone else because not, there aren't going to be that many wide receivers being picked up this week. Uh, I'm not going to make alternate plans for Burrow, but uh, I guess actually, if I had Joe Burrow, I probably would pick up someone just in case you're talking about, you know, the worst possible weather and just an impossible, like 40% chance of precipitation and winds up to 37, gusts up to 37 miles per hour. It could just be one of those horrible games that there's just no passing really. So, I think I I wouldn't I would pick up Minshew I'd pick up Minshew why not you know if I had Burrow so I, I think you just kind of plan for that I mean it depends who you're dropping but in theory sure yeah and I, would I do the same thing for Seattle and Kansas City no it doesn't seem like it's as bad as New England there but all right it's something to keep in mind everyone I'm sorry for the bad news <laughs> hopefully your travel plans don't get impacted so your news and notes yeah Jalen Hurts with the shoulder injury they're at Dallas they are six point underdogs. Uh, Colt McCoy concussion. So it could be Trace McSorley against Tampa Bay. Uh, Taylor Heineke is going to start this week, but nothing's guaranteed after that. And, you know, good luck against San Francisco. Um, AJ Dillon left with a head injury. Uh, so, you know, could be, if you have Aaron Jones, could be an even bigger workload. In fact, I don't know what kind of game Jones would have had if Dillon did, hadn't left with that head injury. It might've been good, but not great. Uh, so that was interesting because Dylan scored. Mm-hmm. Two they basically split reps evenly. Jonathan not, Taylor, not not valuable reps, just reps. Yeah. Uh, Jonathan Taylor left with an ankle injury, as you know. So he is most, you know, he has a high ankle sprain, could be out for the year. They He's get the Chargers so. and the Giants. Yeah. Uh, Khalil Herbert's going to practice this week. So we'll see if he makes it back mm-hmm. and if that will have any impact on David Montgomery against the Bills. Uh, Bam Knight, we think he's fine. We think he's fine. He's off the injury report. Uh, but Robert Sala said that he's probably going to still be questionable, so I'd be a little bit concerned. Okay. Uh, Corey Davis could play this week. Marcus Peters, uh, Marcus Peters, not going to play, right, for the Ravens? Doesn't sound like it. Okay, and not sure about Calais Campbell, but a little bit banged up against the Falcons. I'm sure we're still going to love their DST. Uh, Mitch Morris, Buffalo Center, he's in the concussion protocol. Quinnen Williams has a good chance. It seems like a solid chance to play this week for the mm-hmm. Jets. We could spend probably a half hour breaking that game down tomorrow. Looking forward to Jacksonville Jets talk. Um, all right. That's oh, Leighton Vander Esch is going to be out this week. And also Dallas defensive tackle Dorrance Armstrong left in the second quarter. So they're a little beat up on defense. And yet they're six yes, they points. are. Yeah, and at, in that cornerback, too. Yep, certainly. And, and I gotta fix that Sunday. offensive line injury for the Rams. Brian Allen, their center left on the opening possession. Uh, they've just had the worst offensive line. Okay, let's do our top three at each position. Jamie, I know it's Minshew, and then it's Purdy. Dave, you agree, Minshew, Purdy? I agree. Who's number three, Jamie? Uh, For now, it's Jets quarterback. So I hope it's Mike White, but it doesn't sound like that's going to be the case. But I'll put Zach Wilson third if that's uh, the way it ends up. It's not a great week for streaming quarterbacks, despite your love for Russell Wilson and Ryan Tannehill. Oh, please. Um but I think Zach Wilson, give him the benefit of the doubt that he got you 20 fantasy points, 22 fantasy points last week. And maybe, maybe, maybe can do the same thing against the Jaguars team that's allowed six quarterbacks in the road to score at least 21 points. So Denver's at the Rams. And because I was just thinking, you know, for, if I can't get Minshew, I know Purdy is not available in that league. Do I go Zach Wilson or Russell Wilson? You're saying I should go Zach Wilson. I would go Zach Wilson, but you can make a case for Russell Wilson. You know, the Rams, again, clearly not a very good team at this point. You don't know if Aaron Donald's going to return. If there is a chance for a return, it might be this week because 
I don't know how many home games they have left. I'm going to guess probably two at most. And so this might be the last one he wants to play. So we'll see. Uh, it's a, you know, it's the national game for CBS. It's the Christmas day game. You know, maybe that matters to Russ as much as it does to any of the Rams players. Uh, and the last time we saw him, he had 30 fantasy points before getting concussion. So yeah. Portland Sutton may return. There, there's, there's reasons to like Russ, but there's also, you know, 15 reasons why. And it's weeks one through 15. Well, yeah, especially the last three games before the 30 point burger, he had nine fantasy points in each of his three prior. So yeah. not, yeah. not great for us. There, there's quite a low floor for Russell Wilson. Yeah. No, I look at, I, 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 I honestly, Adam, there, there's a low floor for all four of these quarterbacks. Uh huh. Absolutely. Um, I put him in the column. Don't worry. I took your advice. Thank you. So where is Gardner Minshew in your rankings? Uh, top 12. Wow. He's just outside of the top 12 for me. Would you start him over Tom Brady against the Cardinals? Yes. No. Derek Carr at Pittsburgh. Home, at Pittsburgh. Derek Carr. Yes. Pittsburgh. Um, certainly not Trevor Lawrence. Uh, how no. about Daniel Jones at Minnesota? Yes. Minshew. How about, I'll do one more here. Lamar Jackson against Atlanta if he plays. Yes. I have Jackson. Minshew for Jamie. Jackson for, so you're saying, Jamie, just clarify, Minshew over Jackson? So far, I've st I would start Minshew over all of them. Okay. And Dave's not even Lawrence? Yeah. I'm sorry, not Lawrence. Right, you're right. Sorry. Uh, I, th I think I'm right about the Christmas Eve thing. I, I don't know what you found. Oh, so here's what Wikipedia says. <laughs> Wikipedia says Christmas Eve is the evening. Or entire day before Christmas Day. So <laughs> I like that dramatic pause. That was good. Uh, all right, Dave, who are the top three running backs? We know Zach Moss. Who else? I've got Moss and Jackson at the top because one of the drawbacks with Moss is that it's not a guarantee that he'll be the lead back again. He was the lead back for Indianapolis on Saturday after Jonathan Taylor got hurt. For example, played the majority of snaps and took every single snap when they were in overtime. So that was not when they were trying to kill the clock. They're trying to win the game. Zach Moss was in. Did he impress them enough? I don't know. So Moss and Jackson are back-to-back, -back, and then Chuba Hubbard is the next guy up for me. And I think you can make the case for Chuba over the Colts running backs. I think the next two matchups favor him compared to Foreman. They're playing against the Lions and the Bucks. Those are two good run defenses. They're bad for Deontay Foreman. The Panthers should probably play from behind in both games, which means Chuba should see more playing time. So full PPR, you might be able to talk me into leapfrogging both Colts running backs with Chuba Hubbard, but that's my top three as of now, Moss, Jackson, Hubbard. Now, remember, Dave, when Moss had all those carries in overtime, it was after the Deion Jackson fumble. Mm -hmm. So Jackson did not have a carry after he fumbled with uh, something like four minutes left in the fourth quarter. Another thing that probably favors Moss right now, but, you know, sometimes a guy gets benched after a fumble and then it doesn't really matter the next week. But Moss still was out carrying him even before the fumble. He was. And just another pointer, Chuba's available in only about half of CBS Sports Leagues, so you might not even have the chance to get him, whereas Zach Moss is available everywhere. Oh, man. It, it's Could you imagine if Zach Moss had never entered the picture and it was just Deion Jackson, how much we'd like him this week? We'd love him. Against the Chargers, yeah. There uh, is a scenario where that comes back, and they, the Colts could just decide, listen, Zach Moss wasn't that impressive. Doesn't work on passing downs. Let's put Deion Jackson back in. I thought he did work on passing downs, though. He did, but he didn't get a lot of catches. No, and but I he think worked. Jackson's better in that role. Three targets between the two of them, and and they've stopped doing that. They've since since Saturday became the head coach, they are throwing fewer than five targets per game to their running backs. Now I don't know if their strategy changes without Jonathan Taylor, but they are a ground and pound team. Uh, before they were throwing a ton to their running backs, they've completely flipped. Uh, I tell you what I do love this week. It is Grammarly. This is a great opportunity for you to get a little holiday gift here. 20% off Grammarly Premium. If you go to Grammarly.com slash FFT, G-R-A-M-M-A-R-L-Y.com slash FFT, sign up for a free account. And when you're ready to upgrade to Grammarly Premium, get 20% off for being one of our listeners. So Grammarly helps me a lot when I have to write something, which is not the most common thing. But hey, for a lot of us, we don't write that often, so we're not so comfortable doing it and you want something to help out your writing skills well use grammarly okay what it does i think best is it makes your your writing clearer you're going to get some vocabulary suggestions of course if you have any grammatical mistakes it's going to clean those up but 
if you have excess words, if you're sort of meandering, kind of like this read right now, Grammarly is going to help you just get to the point, be a more effective communicator. And that's a really big deal. Okay. If you're writing a key email to employees, if you're writing a paper, if you're in school, if you're writing some type of presentation or a speech or whatever, put it in Grammarly and let Grammarly do the work. It's going to find the mistakes for you and save you time so you don't have to do the proofreading. And it's going to help you get through your work emails quicker and back to important projects. Get an instant take on how your message comes across with Grammarly's free tone detector so you'll always make the right impression. I highly recommend it. When I do do right, when I do writing, I do use Grammarly. And you can get more time in your day with confidence in your work with Grammarly. Go to Grammarly.com slash FFT to sign up for a free account. When you're ready to upgrade to Grammarly Premium, get 20% off for being our listener. That is 20% 20 off at G-R-A-M-M-A-R-L-Y dot com slash FFT. All right. Uh, wide receivers, Jamie. Who are the top three wide receivers? Uh, Traylon Burks, Jahan Dotson, and Miko Hardman. Do you like any of them this week? No. Miko <laughs> will be the closest to uh, liking <sighs> if he plays. Uh, my boy. Chris Moore, huh? Oh, Chris Moore's there. I mean, you know, again, you got a lot of targets, but there's uh, Brandon Cooks reported a little good in practice last week, and they just, I guess, decided to sit him. So we'll see how he, how close he comes to returning. Nico, Nico Collins could obviously return as well. Uh, it's a fantastic matchup. He had a fantastic matchup last week and had a lot of targets, just didn't come through. So we'll see. Um, but yeah, he's not, uh, he's not a bad fallback option too. Now, Dave, if Zay Jones were available or DJ two of the stars from last week on the waiver wire. We didn't think Chark would have a good game and he didn't. We liked Jones and he came through. Um, yeah. What do you think about those guys? You're starting Zay Jones. Don't even think twice about it. He had a tough matchup last week. He had three touchdowns. You're starting him. Chark has. I don't be so sure. He has a good game. This week. Okay. I'm starting him. I'm not thinking twice about it. Chark is at best a low end number three receiver. It's still a Lions team that's going out on the road. Yeah, so John Anderson, one of our audience members in our chat, says, can we talk about Marquise Goodwin? He's a pretty interesting name with Tyler Lockett. It not, I don't know if he's officially out, but probably out this week. And facing the Chiefs, you figure they're going to be throwing. But the, this is a, one of those weather games. It's going to be frigid. I don't know if it's going to be super windy. But yeah, Marquise Goodwin, uh, he's on the list, Jamie. He's, he's there. What do you think about he him? Def he definitely is is worth taking a look at. Um, there could just be a one week situation because there is some talk about Lockett maybe being able to return in week seventeen. So I think it's going to be a combination of guys replacing um, replacing Lockett. I think Goodwin's certainly in the mix. I think you you know they just brought back for whatever it's worth Laquan Treadwell. Um, Noah Fant is obviously going to be a part of this. I think Will Disley be a part of this. I think you'll see the running backs involved. You know to whatever extent um, DK Metcalf probably gets a spike. So you know Goodwin is the best of the bunch. Um, but I don't know if he's somebody that you want to, again, consider a must-start guy. Okay. Uh, tight end, Dave, who are the top tight ends? Juwan Johnson's at the top of the list for me. Just seeing what he's doing, the production that he's been getting in the end zone, you've got to go and, and get him, and he's available in 75% of leagues. For now, I've got Okonkwo second at 46% available. Just has seen a solid role in that passing game for Tennessee. And then Noah Fant, if we're going to talk about Goodwin, we should talk about Noah Fant, too. He should see a bump in in targets from Geno Smith, especially in a game where they're chasing points. He's available in 74% of fantasy leagues. Anyone feeling Kate Otten this week against the Cardinals? It's hard to trust him if Bright plays. Um where do you have Dwan Johnson ranked and who would you start ahead of, who, who would you start him ahead of? Head of Cole Komet this week, head of Dawson Knox. Um Still Why ahead of Higby Knox? despite the touchdown? Yeah, Why I'm not starting him ahead of Knox. Well, Why ahead of Knox? Yeah. Yeah. I don't trust Austin Knox. Okay. I'm trusting both, him. They're I mean, both touchdown dependent. That they are, but Knox is playing more than Juwan Johnson. And nice matchup against the Bears. His last two games, he's kind of served as the number two pass catcher for Buffalo. So I'm kind of buying into the seven-plus targets, four catches, at least 41 yards, touchdown in each. He leads Buffalo in targets, yards per catch, yards per route run, and yards after catch per reception in their past two games. Yeah, Bears have been really good against tight ends all season, though. So They have been. They have really faced almost no good ones, and I thought, you know, oh, let's see what they do against Dallas Goddard, but that didn't come to fruition, obviously. Mm -hmm. uh, 
So would you start, if you are the Mark Andrews manager, are you going to the waiver wire this week? No. Nope. Okay. Getting some good questions in the, in the chat. We're going to talk about, uh, you know, Richie James and, uh, defenses in a minute here good defense you can get for the next couple of weeks somebody was wanting to know so we'll have some name fact let's do it right now jamie who are your top bsts broncos would be the first one see if they're available hopefully uh play like they did last week and it's a good matchup against baker as we've seen uh the titans just because you know you're, you're playing against the, te the texans offense even though they've played better of late and hopefully they can create a pass rush and maybe get a couple turnovers against davis mills uh the chargers Again, you're taking on Matt Ryan without Jonathan Taylor. I think it's a great situation. Their defense has played very well the last two weeks. And then the Lions against Sam Darnold would be the other top-tier team I think that you can get widely available, and hopefully they continue to play like they have the last several weeks. Yeah, so Denver has uh, a good matchup this week, obviously. But then next week they have the Chiefs. So this week they're at the Rams, and they have the Chiefs. So if you, I don't think you need to consider this. right? If you get to next week, you're competing with one other team for a DST. But... The Chargers, if you want to go that route, they have the Colts and then the Rams in their next two games. So that's a team that has two good matchups. The Lions, I want to, I don't know who they play in Week 17. I'll tell you in one second. Bears. Oh, yeah. Uh, that's not that good. The Lions have the Panthers and oh, the Bears. it's not bad. Yeah, I mean, it's not bad. But it's not as good as the Chargers with, uh, with the Colts and the Rams. Um, but, yeah, I, I, don't, I don't know that you really need to be doing that. But if you do want to do that, the Broncos have a great matchup this week. The Chargers have two great matchups coming up. Uh, kickers, Jamie? Um, if Cameron Dicker still available, I think he's just over the threshold. Take a look at him. I think 67%, but he's been very consistent, and you don't have to worry about weather this week. Uh, Jason Sanders, another team you don't have to worry about weather against the Packers. Robbie Gold against the Commanders, and then Graham Gano against the Vikings. IDP, any, anyone, Dave? Anybody? I don't have anybody yet. All right, we'll, uh, we'll check back in there. In shallow leagues, give this to Jamie. Dave, you can do the deep league guys. Sure. So, Jamie, the ones we haven't really spoken about, you know, the maybe the Darren Wallers of the world and the Zay Joneses, obviously. Who are the best shallow league options this week? Uh, for tight end, it would be uh, Darren Waller would be the best one. I still would stick with Evan Ingram. He had an end zone target that he dropped. Uh, Gerald Everett, and if you want to buy back into Tyler Higby, feel free. If you want to go with Dawson Knox, feel free as well. Um, the uh, wide receivers would be uh, Drake London, obviously coming along the last two games. Tough matchup, but still somebody worth rostering. DJ Chark and Zay Jones. I think Chark has a bounce back game this week because of his matchup. And uh, Zay Jones obviously has been on fire, although I wouldn't start him this week if you don't have to in two receiver leagues. And then the running backs for this week, uh, Cam Akers just had 100 total yards. Um, obviously offensive line concerns, but he's if he's getting involved in the passing game, that'd be fantastic. Three catches last night. Uh, Jarek McKinnon, clearly a must. Uh, roster guy and potentially must start guy james cook continues to you know at times impress us in the passing game hopefully that's something that can be a little bit more consistent and then i put michael carter on the list just in case you know zonaman knight does have some issue um he would be the next man up there for the jets and then the quarterback the only one that's under 85 percent that's worth taking a look at aside from the guys that we mentioned would be daniel jones yeah jones at minnesota he's just not really uh, he's kind of a matchup guy actually but uh, it's weird. It's like when he's had, he hasn't had that many good matchups this year, but when he has, he's had big rushing games. So it's, I don't really know what to take away from that. But, you know, I think a lot of people, if they're missing Jalen Hurts, would probably be very happy to get Daniel Jones this week at Minnesota, especially because that is a dome and they don't have to worry about the elements. So Jamie said Ingram and Waller. And I, I mean, aren't we done with Gerald Everett at this point? Try to be. Uh, uh, he's not bad in, in, you know, PPR getting you eight points. That's what he basically has been giving you. Yeah. He does catch a lot of passes. Drake London. Is Drake London a start for you this week against Baltimore? No, but he's in that same Dotson Burks, uh, Hardman range of just somebody that I would like to have just in case he has another big game for the next well, week. Why don't we have just a quick, I'm going to give put a minute on the clock here. Talk to me about Christian Kirk and Zay Jones. So it's, you know, it's all related, right? Do you need to go to the waiver wire if you're planning to start Christian Kirk or Zay Jones? Like, what do you do with these guys? I know that, I'm sorry, no disrespect to Dallas, but I mean, like the Jets have just held Stefan Diggs and, and Justin Jefferson to fewer than 50 yards and, you know, it shut down and St. Brown had a fine game with seven for 76 or something like that. Jefferson scored a touchdown, but I mean, they're just, they're just the best defense in the AFC, probably maybe second best in football right now. So anyway, now you have a minute. 
Your thoughts, Dave, you can start on starting Kirk and Jones. So they're both the top target getters from Trevor Lawrence, who's been playing out of his mind. And this is a Jets defense that does have great outside corners. They're a little suspect on the inside. But we've seen this Jaguars offense beat up on some pretty good defenses over the balance of the last four weeks. Last week certainly being the case. It's not going to be three touchdowns for Zay Jones. But I'm banking on the volume continuing. He's had at least eight targets, I think, in four of his past five games. And he's gotten you 14 PPR points or more in four of his past five games. And he was a drop pass away from double-digit PPR points in each of his past five games. And Kirk's been pretty steady for the majority of the year. I think they're both number two wide receivers. I know it's a difficult matchup. I know it's a short week. I know there's no starting left tackle for Jacksonville. I don't expect the shoe to fall off of this Cinderella just yet in Jacksonville. I think the Jaguars find a way to win. And I think Trevor Lawrence has another very good game. And Jamie? I think Kirk is the safest one. Um, you know, you, you mentioned it, you know, St. Brown, I think you'll see some similar numbers like that. You know, uh, Kirk, probably six for 70, six for 80, that type of, uh, that type of range for him. I think Zay Jones struggles. I think it's going to be, you know, uh, the, the, the boundary corners for the Jets led by Sauce Gardner, who's having an unbelievable rookie season is going to make things tough on Zay Jones. And as we've seen from the, uh, the Jaguars, you know, you go back to the Ravens game, um, throwing away from Marlon Humphrey, which is why Zay Jones had a big game in that one, uh, throwing to the tight end, you know, um, what was it two games ago when uh, Evan Ingram just went nuts? You know, Doug Peterson is doing a great job of scheming away and, and finding a way to get guys in good spots. I think this is a, a, a problem spot for Zay Jones. So I, I don't totally disagree with Dave. I, I think, you you know, if you've gotten this far with Zay Jones, why would you consider benching him in a three receiver league? But in a two receiver league, I don't think he's somebody that you can necessarily say is a must start given the matchup and the opponent. So um, he's going to be, uh, I, I'll say the exact same thing I said last week about DJ Chark. You should add him but I'm going to say and start sit to sit him. And that's exactly what I did. And I'm going to do the same thing with Zay Jones. Okay. So it was London, Zay Jones, and DJ Chark as the ads, although you know we don't love them. But I like Chark better than Zay Jones this week. Okay. Uh, Cam Akers, Jarek McKinnon, James Cook, Michael Carter is the shallow league running backs. Daniel Jones, the shallow league quarterback. Dave, none of these guys are available in my leagues. Who are the deep league players to add? We talked about Minshew at quarterback and Zach Wilson's out there too. They're both available in over 80% of leagues. If they're somehow both gone and uh, you don't want to take the chance with Andy Dalton, this is going to be gross, but you could start Davis Mills. He's at least 90% available, 22 fantasy points last week. He does take on the Titans this week. Their secondary is still bad. I don't care what Trevor or uh, what Justin Herbert's numbers look like against them uh, last Sunday. Running back, Zach Moss, Deion Jackson, those guys are available in a ton of leagues. I guess the next two that are widely available at running back are Jordan Mason and Marlon Mack. They're both over 70%. Wouldn't want to start them. Might be okay stashing. And by the way, if I've got Christian McCaffrey and I don't have Jordan Mason, I'm an idiot. I'm going to go get Jordan Mason <laughs> to back up Christian McCaffrey on my team for the last two weeks. He is a must stash. At wide receiver, the, the interesting thing about the receivers that we've talked about so far, Dotson, Hardman, Traylon Burks, they're all available in under 70% of the leagues. And there are a lot of wide receivers that are available in 90 plus percent that I think can come through for fantasy managers. If you're really in a pinch, maybe you're in a three receiver triple flex league and you need one of these guys look for Noah Brown, who's had at least 12 PPR points in each of his past two games. He's been mixing in and out of the slot with CD lamb. Look for Russell Gage who had two touchdowns somehow last week and got lucky with a touchdown the week before, but 12 targets last week in that Tampa offense. Rashid Shahid is another Johnny come lately in that Saints passing game. He's had at least 11 PPR points in each of his past two games. I would take them all ahead of Goodwin, even though we figure he's the lock and replacement. Um, he's, he's a one-week guy because I don't know if I'm going to like Goodwin quite as much next week against the Jets. And Tyler Lockett can be back at tight end. Fant's available. Johnson would be first. He's available in 75% of leagues. Noah Fant's available in 74% of leagues. And DST, the Lions, available in 93% of leagues. Getting the Panthers, it's a pretty good matchup for a defense that's been playing really well the last month and a half. All right. I think. And I do have IDPs whenever you want them. Oh, go for it. The first one to add is Troy Anderson, who's the new linebacker in the middle of the Falcons offense. I believe it's in the middle of the Falcons offense does have potential to get double-digit tackles. He's going to be top on my priority list. Taylor Rapp for the 
Rams. He's their starting safety. Also gets a lot of tackles. Has at least nine fantasy points in three of his past four games. It's really good for an IDP. Jerron Bland has been getting an opportunity in Dallas to play in their secondary. He's been good in two of his past three games. And then just names for the rest. Jason Pinnock, if he remains the starting safety for the Giants. Tremont Smith in Houston. And uh, Chandler Jones has gotten you good production, but it's been a little fluky, as you guys know, with that touchdown <laughs> last week. Does not get a lot of tackles, but does have double-digit points in each of his past three games. That's important for defensive linemen, which he is. So you could go and start him if you're really thin at that position. Okay, there's a quarterback that I don't think you mentioned that I'm looking forward to talking about. We'll do that after the break. We'll also uh, recap Green Bay and the Rams. We'll be right back on Fantasy Football Today. Green Bay with the win over the Rams. They cover. They go under. And it was 24 <laughs> to 12. Well, they did. It's true. Yeah. I know By the grace true. of Matt LaFleur. Yeah, yeah. Well, Aaron Jones, one yard away from that touchdown. Christian Watson could have had a touchdown late. Uh-huh. But um, I think that's that's where we should start. Jamie, what do you think about Christian Watson? Um, you know, four catches, 46 yards on six targets. Saw a lot of Jalen Ramsey in the first half and didn't have a catch. Uh, and then, yeah, at the end of the game, looked like they were trying to get him a, a touchdown there, and he ran the wrong route. Anyway, uh, your thoughts on Christian Watson? How much do you trust him at Miami? Uh, I'd lower my expectations a little bit because of, you know, the the thing that happened that was a little bit different since we've seen Christian Watson blow up, which was Romeo Dobbs back. And so, you know, now you're having an additional mouth to feed in this offense that they like and I think they want to get going and, you know, hopefully can be a big part of what their offense is for next season. So um, plus you have another, you know, pretty standout cornerback that he might have to deal with in Xavier Howard as well. So uh, Watson goes from, you know, I, I think a slam dunk starter in two receiver leagues to more of a starter in three receiver leagues with what the matchups are for him and some other receivers around the league this week. So again, you know, it just depends on what else you have, but I would, I would downgrade Watson for sure. Dave, would you start Cam Akers against the Broncos or Zach Moss against the Chargers this week? Probably lean toward Moss over Akers. Akers has looked good. He's continuing to look good and he continues to get a lot of work Had over 70% of the snaps for the Rams, but just a little worried about him. Getting over, you know, 10 non PPR, 15 PPR points, one rushing touchdown to running backs in the Broncos past six games. He led the team in receiving yesterday with three catches for 35 yards. So I think, you know, that tells you what you need to know about the Rams passing game. And that's about it. I mean, we, should we drop Alan Lazard? He's droppable. I, I don't see a situation where you're going to feel comfortable starting him. If, if your choice is to stash any of the, the receivers that we've mentioned are going to talk about, I would take those guys over Lazard. All right, let's go back to the waiver wire then and finish the show with uh, some more names. So we'll just recap. I know we've talked a lot about this. The the uh, shallow league guy is Daniel Jones. And where is he in your rankings this week, fellas? Uh, just behind uh, Minshew, ahead of Purdy, and ahead of Carr, for example. I think he's going to be behind. He's definitely behind Purdy. He's definitely behind Minshew. Uh, he is ahead of Purdy and ahead of Carr for me as well. Yeah, you. Sorry. I think you just said he's both behind and ahead of Purdy. So just to clarify, Daniel Jones or Brock Purdy? Jones. My bad. So Minshew, Jones, Purdy for you and for Jamie, I believe. So Minshew's the top priority. Look, you know, last year he stepped in. He scored 22.8 fantasy points at the Jets on 25 pass attempts. He scored 18.4 fantasy points against the Cowboys in week 18. Um, Dallas is a good, good defense, but you know, this is not, this is one of the better backup quarterbacks in football. So Oh, Gardner Minshew, um, Purdy has been 18.3, 25.7 and 20.5 fantasy points in his three games, two starts. I don't know how you feel about this, guys, but I mean, Washington's pass defense has been ridiculous. They've allowed since they were horrible the first three weeks. Since week three, they've allowed the second fewest passing yards in football. Um, maybe third, actually. It's either them or Green Bay. Very close at second. Um, so I don't know. It's not a good matchup for for Brock Purdy. Does that matter for you guys? Uh, well, I mean, a little yeah. bit. You know, it's it's interesting because you know we think of Dallas as such a great pass defense. And the commanders have actually allowed the same amount of 20 point fantasy games to quarterbacks as the Cowboys have, which is five. So, you know, it's, uh, I don't think it's, it's, it's a slam dunk for either guy, 
you know, in terms of the top two guys we're talking about off waivers. But um, I think Minshew certainly has uh, the higher ceiling just because, you know, you, you kind of see what the 49ers want to do. They don't want to necessarily put him in a lot of scenarios where he's having to throw the ball a lot. You know, he's got 47 pass attempts and two starts. And so I, I think the setup for uh, Minshew, if he's able to, you know, do some of the things that he's done in the past, which at times has been very ugly, but this is the best offense he's ever going to play with. And, you know, you, you you look at the two starts that he made last year, 22 points against the Jets in week 13, 18 points against the Cowboys in week 18. Um, he played with nobody in, in the week 18 game and the week 13 game. Clearly there was no A.J. Brown. So, you know, th- this is a, a, a defense that for the most part has been great in the Cowboys. They just got lit up by Trevor Lawrence. Minshew is not that. Uh, but there are some injuries that the Cowboys are dealing with. And there's an opportunity here for, you know, Minshew to, you know, put a, a, a pretty good audition tape out there to say, you know, maybe he should be a starter in this league. And, you know, for, for anybody that likes to buy into intangibles, his college coach just passed away. I'm sure that would be a nice little, you know, send off for, for Mike Leach to, you know, put on a, a big performance a la what he did at Washington state and, you know, remind people that he still can play at, at, at this level and, and maybe still play successfully. I'm telling you now the Eagles are winning this game. I have uh, I'm very confident in this. This is from the guy who told you to, Try to avoid David Montgomery last week. But this, oh, and I had Cam Akers under 55 rushing yards. But this one I feel pretty good about. The Eagles are just, so, I was thinking about it last week. They are so clearly the best team in football. Yes, they are. I mean, they have no weaknesses. Obviously, things are different without <laughs> they just lose their quarterback. Yeah, they but no when they're healthy, <laughs> they have no weaknesses. They are unbelievably good. I don't think, they're, I don't know they're going to the Super Bowl, but they're the best team in football. They're going to do better than people think. Might come down to Jalen Hurts' shoulder on whether or not they go to the Super Bowl. Yeah. What's the strength of the Cowboys' defense right now? The pass rush. Right. And what is maybe the biggest strength, maybe the second biggest strength of the Eagles' offense? Exactly. Yes, their right. offensive line. It's great. So if Minshew has time to throw, he can he can nail targets downfield. I agree with Jamie. He's got the highest upside of any quarterback on the waiver wire this week. All right. Yeah, I would be thrilled if I didn't get those guys to start Mike White against the Jaguars. <laughs> you know, it's in context here. Uh, for me, I'm sorry. I, it's, I'm making this personal. This is my Kyler Murray, then Ryan, then Mike White, then Ryan Tannehill mm-hmm. league. If I can go back to Mike White, that'd be wonderful. I hope he is plays. it tab or is it waivers? It's waivers. I already have my. I kept Mike White, so um, I'll drop. I'll drop Tannehill for Minshew. It's waivers and your first probably get him. Of the, I'm in third place. Only four teams made the playoffs, so I'll probably get them. Um, yeah, but anyway, Mike White, I mean, you guys, you'd be okay starting him, right? Six straight quarterbacks, eight of the last nine have scored 21 or more points against the Jags. I might feel more comfortable with Mike White if if he was 100% healthy than I would about Minshew, you know, just because of the matchup and had he been playing all this time, you know. So, um, you know, I, I don't know how much of it, and, and, and I'm obviously saying this, somewhat sarcastically how much of it was Zach Wilson or how much of it was the Lions defense that Zach Wilson had a good game. I think it was more about the Lions defense. So, you know, you, you get the opportunity for him to have a very similar type of matchup, you know, so a a defense that's struggling, a sec, not the the Lions defense struggling, secondary that's struggling and an opportunity for him to, you know, probably throw the ball 40 plus times, which is what we've seen. So I I'm hopeful as Mike White, you know, it doesn't sound very optimistic from what Robert Sala said on Monday, but you know, we'll see if a doctor clears him. I think he tried a hundred doctors last week or whatever the, the story was, <laughs> um, you know, doctor clears him and, and he's able to play, you know, you, you, you have the opportunity to make that decision on Thursday. My 20th high school reunion is in two weeks and I went to high, he went to my high school, Mike White. So maybe we can, are you sell- going No, I would, what? I would like to, but I, I can't, I can't swing it. Do you want me to go in your place? <laughs> you think so? You think you, you look the same? <laughs> Uh, I'll, I'll wear a name tag that says Adam A, and we'll see what happens. Are you guys excited to hear the quarterback that I think you left off the list? Sam Darnold against okay. the Lions. What do you think? Make the argument. I think they, you can get benched based on what Steve Wilkes said. Oh, well, that wouldn't be good. They are giving up the most fantasy points to quarterbacks. They just gave up 20 to Zach Wilson and... Uh, 10 quarterbacks have scored 22 or more. They scored, gave 22 to Zach Wilson. 10 quarterbacks have scored 22 or more fantasy points. Uh, Sam Darnold said that teams are going to stack the box and take away the run. And they're going to have to throw the ball more, basically. So he's right. That's my, I'm starting him with the Scott Fishbowl <laughs> instead of Jalen Hurts. Unless I get mid but 
All right, look, it's not, it's, it's the semifinals. I don't think we have to dig that deep. But the other names on the list are Andy Dalton, Davis Mills, Trace McSorley in the two QB leagues. Would Ugh. you would you prefer Tannehill or Russell Wilson to Andy Dalton, Jamie? Um, Wilson, yes. Tannehill, I just don't think he's going to do very much on a gimpy ankle. So, you yeah. know, if he was 100%, maybe it's a different story, but uh, no. Okay. I think this is a ton of, ton of Derrick Henry. Uh, do you think, Tyler Huntley manager should drop him or wait to see what happens. I think if you're in the Andy Dalton, Ryan Tannehill, Trace McSorley boat, you're holding on to, to Tyler Huntley. Uh, the fact that John Harbaugh said what he said yesterday, you know, is a little concerning about Lamar yeah. Jackson. Um, so yeah, you know, it's a, uh, it, it's a much better situation taking on Atlanta this week, but you can't trust Huntley. So, you know, one quarterback leagues, you better find another option. Right, let's go to the running backs here. The shallow league options are acres McKinnon, James Cook, Michael Carter, um, Akers or McKinnon this week? Who do you guys like? Oh, McKinnon. McKinnon. What about in half PPR? Still McKinnon. Yeah, McKinnon. Non PPR, go Akers. I, I do like the fact that first start with Baker Mayfield that that Akers did have three catches. You know, hopefully that's something that they can continue to do. I'll take McKinnon. I don't care what catches count for. Oh no, I I agree with you that. But the the, the earlier question you asked Dave about Zach Moss versus Akers, I'll take Akers. All right, Akers, uh, it wasn't like he was the third down back or anything. He just got those those targets, but that's nice to see. And um, it's McKinnon, almost better that he wasn't the third down back and got that. Yeah. Uh, it's funny. I feel like people were dogging on Pacheco. Pacheco really had a good game. He had the he fumble, did. which stunk, but mm-hmm. he's been over 82, 82 or more total yards in, I think, six straight games. It's It's not bad, but are you ready to start McKinnon over Pacheco now? Yes. In in all but non PPR leagues, yes. Okay. Um, all right. So we got Zach Moss. Top is he in your top twenty four? No, no. Deion Jackson is another guy. Tyler. Oh, we haven't talked about Tyler Algier. Unfortunately, he's facing Baltimore this week. But if you want to stash him, maybe for Arizona in two weeks, that's interesting. Uh, Jamie, your quick thoughts on Tyler Algier? Uh, I think he's got an opportunity to, you know be a little bit more featured in the offense with w- the way the Falcons are headed right now, you know, so let's see if he can be as, as Heath alluded to on, believe it or not yesterday, you know, their lead running back for 2023. So he's not, he's not a bad flex in non PPR and PPR. It's going to be tough to trust him. He's still not going to be involved in the passing game that you like. And obviously Cordero Patterson's not going away for what it's worth. They still are, are mathematically alive for the division. So they're going to try and win. It's not like they're just, you know, tanking, but, uh, this is clearly an offense that's going to struggle. It's a, it's a brutal matchup against the Ravens. And so to start Tyler Algier, you got to be really desperate. You're picking up Algier to use next week against Arizona. Yeah. And Dave, you made the case for Chubbard, Chuba Hubbard, 48. Yeah, you know what? I'm going to, if it's full PPR, I'll take Hubbard ahead of the Colts running backs. Okay. He's had three catches in two straight games. Um, mm-hmm. Obviously, the Lions have become arguably the toughest matchup in fantasy. It's eight straight teams now. No, no running backs had double digit PPR fantasy points, but mm-hmm. hopefully in the passing game, you can get something from Chubbard. Uh, Royce Freeman looked like the lead running back for the Texans. Unfortunately, he's got the Titans this week. Jordan Mason could always have like a 46 yard run at the end of the game or something like that, or whatever it was, 54, whatever. Oh, I nearly um, had a huge DFS week on Thursday. You did, almost was, did. He, yeah. He you had, he, had, he was my mm-hmm. captain on uh, DraftKings and I had, Kittle and uh, McCaffrey and Gino. I don't know what it was, but if Mason had scored, it was uh, it was a big swing. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Um, Marlon Mack. He actually don't think he was the third down back. I think that was, I think that was Latavius Murray actually, and yet Murray had one catch maybe, and Mack had four. So I don't know what that was all about. So if you look the way that I that I gave you the 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 notes for this. Uh, for the waiver stuff um, with the handcuff guys. Yeah. Um, so I, I kind of separated Mason and Moss as guys. Like if you're desperate, they're producing, playing a little bit more than the other traditional handcuffs. Mm-hmm. So, you know, 14, 16 team league, if you're stuck, you know, the, the way I'll explain it in the column, you can use these guys. The other ones like the Madisons of the world where they're not playing very much. You just want to stash those guys just in case something happens in week 16 and you need somebody in week 17. Could you imagine dropping Madison because he's been absolutely useless for for 15 weeks and then <laughs> something happens in week 16? How bad you'd be? Could you that. imagine that Dalvin Cook is going to play the majority of the season and not be a top three running back? <laughs> yeah, that's true. Seriously. Um, 
but you probably can get away with dropping your handcuff because if you make it to next week, you're either first or second in the waiver wire priority, right? You got a 50% chance of getting that guy back. But why it, do it though? Why, why take that you're risk? Yeah. You're also, you're also at, at a point where like we're telling you to pick up Traylon Burks and Jahan Dotson and these guys that you're most likely never going to start. The, the bigger security blanket for your team is to hold on to that running back. Yes, but thank you. What if you are facing a team that has Jalen Hurts? Would you drop your handcuff for Gardner Minshew to block your opponent? I think there's obviously a lot of different circumstances. So yes, if that's the only droppable player and I want to make sure I give myself the best chance to win, then then sure. But you know, I, I think the last thing you want to do is you know put yourself in a situation where you get to week 17 and you just drop Madison and Dalvin Cook goes down. You know, so I, I got a better idea, but it's a little nefarious. Oh, oh, go. You drop your kicker to pick oh. up Minshew and you hold on to your to your uh to your handcuff at the same time and then right before the games kick off go pick up a kicker off the waiver wire drop Minshew oh, or drop somebody else yeah i told you it's nefarious it's it's wicked it's terrible it's fantasy football i'm trying to win <laughs> yeah i don't know i'm called the cops oh, I, 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 it's yeah. legal it's it's legal to do it's just proud i feel like you should have to have a legal lineup by thursday personally but um, okay. If, if you, Hey, look, if you want to be that way in the holidays, I'm not going to tell you that you're a bad person. I'll let somebody else do that. Uh, wide receivers, Drake London, DJ Chark and Zay Jones are the options in the shallower leagues. They're not necessarily stars, although Dave is higher on Zay Jones than Jamie is, uh, Traylon Burks, Jahan Dotson. Again, like we said, recommending them. They're the, the maybe the best options, but don't know if you really want to start them this week. Uh, Miko Hardman would love to see him get back to form, but I think it's going to be tough to trust first game back. There's Chris Moore going up against the Titans who allow the most fantasy points to wide receivers, but this could be a really bad weather game. Romeo Dobbs, Russell Gage, Elijah Moore is on this list. I assume if Corey Davis plays, you wouldn't have any interest in Elijah Moore? Uh, not necessarily because Denzel Mims got hurt. So, you know, they, they could still keep Elijah Moore in the slot. And so that might help him, especially if Mike White plays. I could make a case that Marquise Goodwin is the most startable. Sure. Uh, Go for it. <laughs> yeah, and it's just all these, so many of these guys have bad matchups or bad circumstances. Uh, Goodwin is going to step in for a locket. But he has, he had, Goodwin might have bad wind. That is true. <laughs> uh, the Chiefs are 28th against wide receivers. Um, they just shut down Chris Moore, though. <laughs> he had nine targets. That was really disappointing, by the Get way. Get eight PPR points. Yeah. I give him like 8.6, buddy. Give him, give him it, a decimal. It's a shocker, huh? Guy that's been in the league for six years. Uh, doesn't I, follow look, through after a big game. You never see that. Never. You know what I'm going to say about Marquise Goodwin? You know, just filling the locket void, and you know, hopefully they're chasing points for his sake and, you know, could fall in the end zone. Nice. Uh, KJ Osborne, Rashid, Rashid Shahid. Noah Brown. I, mean, I know it's not going to be a lot of guys you're starting. You have any interest in a Giants guy, Hodgins or James at the Vikings? Not really. Yeah, I'd have to be pretty desperate. Um, Mac Collins? No. You know, the fact that um, Josh McDaniel said they're going to give more playing time to Renfro and Waller, it's, I, I think, hard to expect the same amount of targets for Hollins. But it was nice to see him still stay involved in the disaster against the Patriots. What if Deontay Johnson's available? He's 85% rostered. Yeah, you know, I, I I thought about that with the guys who are, are available, but, you know, I mean, I think the leagues that have him have him already. Probably. Okay, tight ends. I mean, that is for sure. The leagues that have him do have him already, but I know exactly what you meant. <laughs> uh, tight ends. Uh, Gerald Everett, Darren Waller, Evan Ingram, Tyler Higby. Jamie refuses to put Dawson Knox on there, but I'm going to... No, I'll put him there. Okay. <laughs> I won't start him, but up on the. He's a top five tight end this week. Wow, I'm sure Jamie, you'd start him over Tyler Higby. Yeah. Would you start him the over? Reason, I, the only reason I put Higby in there, like whenever somebody has a game like this, I just want to tell people don't trust it. Don't trust it. Okay. You guys like Ingram this week? Uh, low on starter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Much better in PPR than non. It, are you fully trusting Darren Waller and Dallas Goddard if Goddard plays? Waller, yes. 
Uh, Goddard, maybe, just because Rust and new quarterback. So Both top 10 tight ends. I want to say he had 100 yards and two touchdowns with Minshew. He had a monster game. Last year. It, it was, was one of the arguments uh, against Goddard back in draft season was that his best game last year came with Minshew. Yeah, and basically all of his end zone targets. Uh, this is, he never gets thrown there by uh, – Jalen Hurts, that that bum. Okay, so the guys who are available, uh, it seems like Juwan Johnson is the guy to get. You agree on that? He caught four passes on six targets while running 13 routes last week, and he scored two touchdowns. He's had at least one touchdown in five of his past seven games. The games he didn't score was a blowout win against Las Vegas and a butt kicking at San Francisco. What about the matchup? The Browns are sixth best against tight ends and the weather. To sway you off. Weather would be a humongous factor, obviously. Yeah. Damn, I ugh. we're gonna have a live stream on Saturday morning, by the way. So that's from eleven thirty AM until one PM Eastern. So we'll help you out there if you want to join us on youtube.com slash fantasy football today. We also have uh our show on HQ. What time is that? Same time, ten a.m. Ten o'clock on Sunday. All right. Are you doing a on Sunday Saturday. show too? Saturday, no Sunday show. Good. So ten AM on Christmas Eve. Ten AM on Saturday morning. <laughs> Uh, all right. How do, who do you guys like better, Oconquo, assuming Burks plays, or Noah Fant? Fant if Burks plays. Agreed. All right. You want this stat of the game, stat of the year? Noah Ooh. Fant's gonna win you your league. Five games with five to seven targets. He has scored double-digit PPR fantasy points in four of them. He has scored fourteen or more fantasy points in three of them. Two of them were against Arizona, though. So <laughs> fans actually been pretty good when he's gotten five to seven targets. Can I combat your stat with another stat? Yes. The chiefs have allowed eight or fewer half PPR points to a tight end in eight of their past 11 games. Yeah. They have actually been very good against tight ends. They did allow two touchdowns to tight ends last week, but really good for most of the year. Mm -hmm. uh, Jordan Akins is on this list. He occasionally has a good game. Trey McBride. Against the Bucks, they've allowed three touchdowns to tight ends in their last four games. Trace McSurley to Trey McBride to win you fantasy. Uh, starters hit Taysom Hill and Cole Komet this week. If you had them, would you be going to the waiver wire? Hill and Komet. Hill might be interesting with the weather. You know, they may uh, decide to give him some more rushing Ooh, opportunities. So that's yeah. not a bad thing to consider. But all things considered, he's been largely disappointing. Um, and Komet? Against the Bills? I don't want to start committing against the Bills. Agreed. Yeah. They've allowed over eight and a half half PPR points to one tight end all year, and it was Travis Kels. Wow. Uh, and Kels. And DSTs, the Broncos, the Titans, the Chargers, the Lions, and the Rams. Broncos have the Rams. The Titans have the Texans, who've actually been kind of a, a letdown as far as, as far as a matchup goes two straight weeks. The yeah. Chargers get the Colts, Lions get the Panthers, and the Rams get the Broncos. Wouldn't you just get the Chargers and be done with it so you don't have to make a move next week? There you go. Uh, but I, wouldn't you, would you rather have the Broncos this week or the Chargers? Broncos. I, they both have an excellent matchup. So I'll take the Chargers, who scored at least 10 fantasy points in each of their past three games, without Derwin James playing, by the way. Uh, I don't get this comment here. Jamie looks like the type of guy. Oh, no, wait, not that one who looks at his text messages and never replies. That's not true. That's oh, no, definitely not true. <laughs> Looking like the type of guy to close the refrigerator door with his hip. What's wrong with that? I always I do that up in your hands. Why wouldn't you do yeah, that? What, what, what are you trying to do here? Drop the drop your drink. And your I name is it. juice. You got to be getting juice out of the refrigerator. <laughs> juice vino, no less. What do you think about closing? the lowest drawer in your refrigerator with your foot. I do it all the time. Um, do it a lot. Have a broken drawer at the bottom of my refrigerator. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's so disgusting. If you think about it, like you go to open it and just think that somebody's foot has been on there. And then you go reach in there. And well, you no, you don't well, touch, but you're not, you don't you're, you don't put your toe on the handle or under yeah, the doing? handle. It's yeah, the, it's the bottom, of, it. it's the bottom it. of the drawer. Like you don't touch the, the handle with your foot. No, of course not. That, but okay, what what about opening it with, with your foot? I don't know what kind of refrigerator you have. We can't do that. 
I've got a dr- I've got a drawer. I could stick my foot under the lip and pull out the drawer. Yeah, that's disgusting. That seems that. like it just takes too much effort. There's nothing in your hand less, when you're doing that. Less effort than bending down. Okay, it's a no. It's a no. Okay. Uh, you shouldn't I mean, you bend without bending you your knees. Though. Shut up, Jamie. All right, we're out of here, everybody. Thank you for watching and listening. We'll talk to you tomorrow with some tough calls and a 60-minute preview of Jets and Jaguars. Uh, Later, everyone.